my wife is addicted to the gym and it's ruining our marriage. Strap in because this is a juicy one. Okay. Trigger warnings for infidelity, physical violence, anger management issues. The original post was February 1st, 2024. My wife is 30 years old and she's worked out and been in shape, but lately I feel like it's becoming excessive. She used to regularly work out at a gym when she was in college. At some point, she stopped going to the gym. I think lately, just due to her schedule, and preferred to work out at home or go for runs outside. About 18 months ago, she announced she was going to get back into the habit of going to the gym. She now had a job where she's able to make more time for it. It started off normal, but slowly became more and more frequent. She signed up for classes on the weekend, both days. She started going to the gym every day. Then it became the morning before work, and then again later in the evening, every single day. If she's stressed, she goes to the gym. Experience some sort of life crisis, goes to the gym. We have an argument, she runs to the gym. She's four months pregnant right now. I'm kind of surprised we even had time to make a kid. I understand that it's safe for her to work out, especially since she was already in the habit of doing it before she got pregnant, but the intensity is not slowing down. If she misses one of her normal gym sessions, she becomes irritable, like a junkie not getting her fix. It's just bizarre. Truly a case of too much of a good thing. Of course, she gets upset when I voice that I feel it's becoming an unhealthy obsession and that I miss spending time with her because she's there so much. She has all of these friends and a whole circle of people that she seems to prefer spending time with over me. Why don't we work out together at the gym? The gym is her time, she says. This isn't a case of me feeling insecure because she's in great physical shape and I'm a fat slob. I work out too and I'm in shape. My job really requires me to stay in shape so I can't let myself go even if I wanted to. I genuinely feel her gym habits are unhealthy now. She's over-exercising for one. There is such a thing. But worse than that, I feel it's becoming a way for her to escape everything else in life. She never actually fixed anything that goes wrong in her life. She just runs off to the gym to get some sort of mood boost and that's it. She also never gets anything done in a practical sense because how can she when she's at the gym so often? It's to the point where I have to do every chore and if food is being made, I'm going to have to do it. I don't expect her to do all of those things, but it should be at least a shared effort. People we know have commented about it to me. They've said things about how she seems different, how she sure is at the gym a lot, and many of her friends and family barely see her anymore. Some have even suggested she's having an affair with somebody there. Please tell me that this doesn't sound normal to you too. She insists that this is perfectly normal. I have an update for you. Okay. 10 days later, February 11th, 2024. I posted not very long ago about my wife's addiction to the gym. A compulsion, if you will. She spends most of her free time there. She often goes twice a day, and sometimes even three times a day if we have a fight at night and she needs to run off instead of actually talking to me. Wow. And she won't let me go with her to the gym and refuses to go to mine. Her gym is her place. My gym is my place. That's just the way it has to be according to her. I'd love to have her come along with me. I've invited her multiple times. She's about 18 weeks pregnant right now. This is our first baby. She's worked out like crazy prior to the pregnancy and she continues to do just as hard now. I truly didn't think she was cheating on me. People suggested it in the last thread and I laughed. You can tell she's at the gym a lot. She's in great shape. So she's obviously going there. I feel really confident about the cheating issue and when I posted 9 days ago, I wasn't even considering cheating. I'm embarrassed to admit that after reading a lot of the comments in my last post, I thought maybe I was being overly confident about her fidelity. She usually always has her phone on her, but she left it on the kitchen counter and as stupid as I felt, I decided to do a quick swipe through her text. She had a current text conversation going with a guy. I recognize the name. The same name of the guy from the gym she mentions a lot. She's friends with a lot of people there. Went to one of their weddings last fall. I wasn't too terribly concerned until I started reading the text. Never wanted to know what a guy's dick looked like, but now I know. She was only out of the room for literally a minute or two, so I had to scroll fast. I was furious. I asked her what the fuck that conversation was about. She started yelling at me for looking through her phone. I told her she's acting so weird and the gym obsession is really bothering me, so I just decided to look and was ashamed that I did, but that I thought I'd find nothing. She said, it's nothing, it's nothing. Didn't look like nothing to me. She sir seemed pretty interested in this nothing. I wanted to know if she's been fucking him and for how long. 
She kept saying no. I left the house because I was furious, but not before I slammed her phone on the ground and shattered it. She was calling me all sorts of names for breaking her phone. She hit me on the back as hard as she could, and I left. Went to my brother's house. My brother and sister-in-law were shocked. Although my sister-in-law was one of the most vocal ones about my wife's gym session being weird and bringing it up to me constantly. I went home, and she was in bed crying. She obviously couldn't call me or anything else for that matter. She was laying it on thick. I didn't know if you'd ever come home. Give me a break. I took her phone to get it repaired tonight. She doesn't deserve it, but I feel like an ass breaking her phone. I still don't know how deep it goes. She won't admit to anything beyond what I saw. Was it sexting? That's bad enough. Or was it more? I'm convinced it was a lot more, but she refuses to hand her phone over and now is trying to act like I'm this terrible monster who is abusing her because I broke her phone. Not my proudest moment, but I honestly wanted to body slam her after she punched me. I have never and would never actually touch her like that. Jesus. <laughs> Whoa. Want another update? Yeah. Next day, Feb 12th. Today, my wife asked me to stay home from work so that we could talk. She laid in bed all day yesterday trying to get me to feel sorry for her, but I paid absolutely no attention to her and ended up leaving the house to go to my friend's Super Bowl party. I wasn't in the mood to go, but I wasn't going to sit at home with her. It really bothered her that I left. She kept texting me things like, Who just leaves like that when something like this is happening? Who is that cold and callous that they would just leave to go to a party? I stayed home today to talk to her, and she was full of tears. She's, quote, so sorry. According to her, she really was going to the gym twice a day because she likes going there. And that's where her friends are. It makes her feel good. It's fun for her. She met this guy there and he started flirting with her. Everyone likes him. He's one of the most popular guys there. I didn't realize there were popular people at the gym. She admitted she flirted back but didn't mean anything by it. She didn't reciprocate very much at first, but he gave her butterflies. And she just found herself flirting back without thinking. She said it felt like when she had a crush on somebody that she was in school when she was younger. They started texting. At first, it was just friendly and nothing sexual for months. But she felt giddy every time she got a message from him. She was really attracted to him, but told him that she was married and there could actually never be anything between them. According to her, he kept flirting with her anyway and said, sure, we won't cross that line until they did cross the line. She said she had tried to resist it for a while, but then one day they kissed. She admitted to enjoying it, but also feeling it was wrong. She must not have felt that bad because she slept with him for the first time later that night. She described it like falling in love with somebody for the first time. All she could think about was him. Is she in love with him? She doesn't know. Is the baby mine? She thinks so, but there's always a small chance that it could be his. He always used a condom, so she doesn't think that the baby is his, but they were sleeping together at the time she got pregnant. But she loves me. She can't help that. There's just this huge spark between the two of them. She doesn't know if she loves him. She doesn't know if the baby is mine. She doesn't know why she did this. She doesn't know what she thinks we should do. The nail in the coffin is when she said, You would really leave me if the baby's not yours, wouldn't you? She had the balls to ask me that. I told her, of course I'm leaving her, and I wouldn't raise another man's child. She seemed shocked. She said, really? With everything we have in all of our history, you wouldn't even consider it? She can't be serious, oh I told God. her. No, I would not consider it. She agreed to get a DNA test. She tearfully agreed, like I'm supposed to feel sorry for her about that. I don't know who this woman is. She was crying the whole time but not tears of an ashamed or sorry person. They were tears for herself and meant to try to make me feel bad. Feel bad for what? That a heart is- Defense school is mad at me for telling him to hit a girl. Am I the asshole? So I, 32 female, have a 12 year old son. We'll call him L. For the past two years, L has been coming home from school crying because he was always getting bullied. L has always been a gentle kid and very sensitive. I encouraged him to use his words and to tell the bullies to leave him alone and to tell the teachers what is happening. The past few months, he's been having problems with these two crotch goblins that are girls. Now, normally they would just make fun of him, but one has taken to physically hitting him. So I changed the rules. I had a meeting with Elle's teachers, the principal, along with the girl and her parents and Elle. I told them straight to their face that I will give three warnings. First warning, he will confront her. Second warning, he will confront the teacher. Third warning, he will tell the teacher he is going to handle it, and if she passes that warning, then he is going to punch her back. They all looked at me like I was crazy, 
So two weeks ago, I had a session with this therapist where he looked at me like he was scared and he told his therapist how he got into a fight at school. Part two, my son's school is mad at me for telling him to hit a girl. Am I the asshole? They all looked at me like I was crazy. So two weeks ago, I had a session with this therapist where he looked at me like he was scared and he told his therapist how he got into a fight at school where he threw hands with a girl and got sent to the principal's office. Two days before, he never said anything. I was obviously really upset about this and Al started crying because he could see that I was mad. I got up and gave him some ice cream and told him we were gonna speak with the principal the next day. So the next day I go to the school, still livid, and let myself into the principal's office and demand to know why I had to find out about the fight for my son and not the school. They told me that they had contacted his father to tell him. That's a whole other fuck topic that I may or may not post about. I then proceeded to tell them that one, Al had to wait two days for his ice cream because I sure as shit was going to reward him for standing up for himself. And two, I have primary custody of him for a reason. They said they prefer not to deal with me. So they contacted his father instead. By the way, I believe he gave the girl fair warnings and I have a daughter too, so I don't play the whole but she's a girl game. So am I the asshole for telling my son to hit a girl? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Am I the asshole for yelling just leave me the F alone during a family dinner at a crowded restaurant? My brother, 26 male, and I, 18 female, have never got along. He spent my entire childhood controlling everything I did, watched, and even ate. At Christmas, he pissed me off because I was proud of myself for buying my first vehicle and he called my truck a POS. Then said to our parents, insurance companies statistically have higher rates for female drivers than males. Absolutely insinuating they shouldn't put me on their policy because then he'd get booted off. And this past weekend, it was our brother's birthday and he asked me when I'm moving out. I said, excuse me, and he said, you're 18 now. You need to get your own place. Am I the asshole for yelling, just leave me the F alone during a family dinner at a crowded restaurant? I said to him, you're not even on your own yet since you haven't bothered paying a single penny of rent in seven years. He was fuming and tried to change the topic. But my mom made a comment about that changing soon and brother's girlfriend was like, what? So I told her he moved out at 19 and hasn't paid our parents a penny of rent all these years. She was livid because we didn't know it, but she'd been paying my brother's rent for two years because he led her to believe he was paying rent. Wow. My brother then said that I should focus on my current job and forget about wasting time with college. He then made more comments and I told him to shut the F up. Am I the asshole for dropping my daughter off at daycare early so her teacher could do her hair? So I'm a newly divorced dad of a three-year-old girl and I have her every other week. My daughter has very curly hair that my ex-wife used to take care of. Now that I'm alone with her, half the time I have to figure it out. I do try, but on my weeks, her hair is mostly a frizzy, tangled mess. A teacher at my daughter's daycare has very similar hair to my daughter's, so I asked if she could help me with my daughter's hair. She said she could do my daughter's hair in the mornings if I dropped her off earlier. She also gave me a list of curly hair products to buy and what to bring to school. Am I the asshole for dropping my daughter off at daycare early so her teacher could do her hair? She gave me a list of curly hair products and also gave me some tips for washing and caring for it at home. I guess my daughter told my ex that her teacher does her hair for her and she goes to daycare early. Because now my ex is calling me asking if I really drop her off 30 minutes early just so I could avoid doing her hair. She called me a bad parent for relying on a teacher to do my job and for messing up the morning routine. The usual routine was that we'd wake up, give her a bath, attempt to do her hair, have breakfast, and then go to school. And now we do breakfast in the car. And I just want to know, am I wrong? Am I the asshole for refusing to get a job and pay rent at my parents' house? I had my 18th birthday three days ago, and on the day after my birthday, my stepdad said he wants me to pay rent to live in his house. My stepdad is quite Christian and conservative, and I don't expect to live rent-free forever, but I know my stepdad is coming from a spiteful place. Him and my mom have had two kids and nine years of marriage. I'm a reminder that my mom was a non-virgin divorced woman before him, so of course I'm treated like a guest and my mom is allowing it. Why? Because she thinks the sun shines out of his ass. He doesn't need my money to pay rent, plus I don't have much and he wants £100 per month. Am I the asshole for refusing to get a job and pay rent at my parents' house? 
My A-level exams start mid-April and last up to July. I'm doing STEM subjects and I'm hoping to fulfill my offer for a medical course at a good university. I'll need to do a lot of studying and if I have to get a job, it'll be difficult to maintain the level of studying I need. Out in September. It honestly just feels vindictive and it's not like I'm unproductive. I'm trying to save the money I had at my last job for when I do move out and it just feels spiteful and like he's pushing me and making my life harder. My aunt who isn't too fond of him is saying he's being ridiculous and told me to come live with her. Took her offer but my mom's crying. Am I the asshole for taking my girlfriend's daughter on a motorcycle ride? So I've been dating my girlfriend for just under a year and we don't live together yet but do plan on moving in together around April. She has a daughter 14 from a previous marriage but I don't really interact with her daughter that much. We obviously say hi to each other but we've never actually spent one-on-one -on -one time together. But on Tuesday, my girlfriend called me and asked if I could pick her up from school and take her to lunch. She had to stay late at work and I was free, so I agreed. And I decided to take my bike because the weather was pretty decent. Like it was cold, but it wasn't raining, you know? Am I the asshole for taking my girlfriend's daughter on a motorcycle ride? I decided to pick my girlfriend's daughter up in the bike because it was really nice outside. Like it was kind of cold, but it wasn't raining. So I picked her up and we did go to lunch, but afterwards she still wanted to ride around on the bike with me. I didn't know she was into motorcycles, so I thought that this might be my opportunity to bond with her. So we drove around on some countryside roads for about an hour and then I dropped her off. Well, that same evening, my girlfriend called me and she was furious I picked her daughter up from school on my bike. But I said she never said that I couldn't and we had a small argument and she called me selfish and irresponsible. Am I the asshole for dropping out as my brother's best man days before his wedding? My 36 brother, 30, got married this past weekend and I was supposed to be his best man. The wedding was 12 plus because they didn't want to deal with toddlers, which is fair. Many people did have young kids, so they decided to have a venue nearby with a professional sitter if parents wanted to drop their kids there. My wife has injuries that make her slow to respond or understand what other people are saying. She also needs help with her food, but she's a very capable woman. Well, at the rehearsal dinner, sister-in-law said that if my wife had any food preferences, they would order extra food for her at the second venue. The one with the babysitter. Am I the asshole for dropping out as my brother's best man days before his wedding? I was extremely confused and said we already gave our meal choices, but she said my wife would be better suited at the second venue. I remember just kind of staring at her. She said, it's not like they're just looking out for my wife and I don't have to feed her or anything and can have fun at the wedding. My brother came over and I told him I've literally never heard anything like that and they think my wife is a child. Brother said it's for the best and I can go over and check on her. I said if this is how they want to treat my wife, I have no desire to be part of their shit show and dropped out as a best man. And no, I didn't go either. Am I the asshole for moving to a hotel because my wife's family insisted I sleep on the couch? My wife and I got married last summer and her family lives across the country from us. So I'd actually never visited, but I did meet them a handful of times and we've always gotten along fine. They invited us to come and stay with them for a few days and we took up on the offer. We flew in yesterday and everything went well. Her dad and I watched football and I caught up with her mom and sisters and then we had a nice dinner. But then they let us know they don't want us sharing a bed while in their home and they wanted me to sleep on the couch. I thought they were joking, but they insisted. I had a problem with the implication that I shouldn't be allowed to sleep next to my wife. Am I the asshole for moving to a hotel because my wife's family insisted I sleep on the couch? I also have a bad back and the couch did not look the least bit comfortable. After arguing back and forth, I decided to leave and book a hotel. I did tell my wife she did not have to come and she chose to stay and I said I'd come back the next day. The next morning, I called my wife asking when I should come by and she said her parents want me to apologize. I said I'd do it to keep the peace, but they need to acknowledge it wasn't appropriate to insist I can't share a bed with my own wife. She told me that not only will they not apologize for it, now they're insisting I come back and stay on the couch for the rest of the visit. And if I don't agree, I'm not welcome back. Am I the asshole for not buying a drink for my friends? I was out with a few friends the other day and we went to a restaurant for dinner. One of my friends is Muslim and is very strict about everything. For example, once one of her coworkers was smoking in the break room and she asked her to do it somewhere else. My friends wanted drinks and I saw that she looked to the ground and grimaced. 
So when the waiter came, I only asked for a few glasses of water and nothing else. My friend then interjected and asked for beer and I stopped the waiter and told him no. Just water, please. Am I the asshole for not buying a drink for my friends? My friend asked for beer and I said no, actually just water. When he came back with the water, all of my friends piped up at me and started an argument about it. My friend who is Muslim, Fatima, was being silent but later told me she appreciated what I did. After dinner though, my friends left me with the bill and drove home. So, am I wrong? I should really add that these were my friends, not hers, and they met her once and asked her to come. Top comment says Fatima is allowed to practice her religion but has no right to project her beliefs onto other people. I agree, but it was more of OP doing it. I told her that's chubby. You're chubby. Am I the asshole for telling my girlfriend she's not curvy, she's chubby? Oh my god, buddy, you're running on a thin line right now and that line snapped for sure. I'm already calling you an asshole for this, but let's let's let me hear you out. So my girlfriend, 23 female, and me, 26 male, have been together since 2019. She used to weigh about 125 pounds at 5'8". She was pretty thin. The past 13 months, she gained 25 pounds and now weighs 150 pounds. She continuously calls herself curvy and that's just not true. Her boobs did not grow with the weight gain and she is still a 34A cup. Her thighs and butt area did grow a bit, but she's still not an hourglass. You're an asshole. Holy shit. I don't like what? Stop. I wouldn't be bothered by this if she didn't heavily identify with it. When she was 125 pounds, she kept identifying with how thin she was. At 125 pounds, she was proud that they couldn't see anything on her CT scan when she had an appendicitis because she was too skinny. She wants to make a TikTok fashion page dedicated to curvy fashion. I got annoyed with her identifying so much with a body type that isn't even hers that I said, you're not curvy, you're chubby. She looked at me stunned. I told her curvy was like Beyonce, for example. She said that she felt that she was curvy because she's not skinny anymore and not fat. I told her that's chubby. You're chubby. And she began to cry and left my apartment. Ah, ah. Oh my god, wow, that's so mean. It's been 12 hours and we haven't talked since. I know this was mean, but it was true. I was so frustrated with the idea of her making this fashion TikTok account for a body type that's not hers. See, let's get to the root of it. Why does that bother you? It's like her own personal TikTok. Like, why do you care? Why does that bother you? It's her life. It's her body. It's her TikTok. Like, why does that? Does has nothing. It doesn't affect your life at all. Also, she hasn't had an eating disorder or anything. I think she just naturally gained weight as she got older. Am I the asshole for stating a fact? Am I the asshole for locking the door to prevent my husband from getting involved in my job interview? I, 33 female and unemployed, but God knows I have been looking for jobs. I'm a sales rep for well over five months. My husband has a high paying job. First, he suggested that I leave my career as a sales rep behind, not up to his wealthy family standards, they'd mock me for it a lot, and stay home, but I refuse because I love my job and want to grow in it. He suggested he finds me a better job since he has a lot of connections, but that's not in my field. I've had several job interviews and my husband has ruined all of them for me and here's how. He'd walk into the room whenever I'm having a potential job interview and he'd introduce himself and take over the conversation with the interviewer. He'd tell them about how good I am but slip up in some bad stuff that eventually cost me the job. He's sabotaging you. Let's get it straight. He does not want you to be working. Wait, hold up. He walks before all that. He walks into your. He walks into her interviews. Like, who does he think he is? God forbid, if you had ever done that to him, he would have been pissed. So why does he think he can do that to you? Let alone anyone. Like, no one should be in there when you're interviewing. His argument was that he's just making recommendations since he has connections and influence. But I told him to stop and let me handle it. He sulked saying he was just trying to guide me and whatnot. Several days ago, I'd gotten a job interview and after getting inside the room and before the interview started, I locked the door. My husband tried to come in and started knocking on the door asking why I was locking the door and telling me to let him in. I put my headphones on and used noise cancelling but he kept knocking telling me to open the door. After the interview was over, I unlocked the door and walked out. He went off on me calling me disrespectful and awful to lock him out like that. I said I was sorry, I wanted to work for this company so badly and I couldn't let him ruin it for me. He got offended and said that I was being petty and childish and also ungrateful because of the stun I pulled and said that he was just trying to help me get the best deal out there. I said I'm not a child and he said yes I was, especially with how I behaved and for excluding him from my interview. Oh my god, forget about this interview woman. This guy has control issues. If he's doing this just over your job, imagine you later down in life when you want to make other decisions. <gasps> this is just screaming obsessive, screaming red flags, screaming get out of here, screaming this guy thinks he's an alpha male and listens to a lot of podcasts about male domination and shit like that get out of there
I like is a good sister to him, but as a person, truthfully, I can't stand her. Am I the asshole for accidentally telling my fiance I hate his sister and she won't be a part of my wedding? First of all, I don't like that statement because it's not just your wedding, it's your husband's wedding too, and that's his sister, unless she's done something really bad for you to like, get this bitch out. This situation is literally ridiculous, but this whole thing has caused almost nuclear warfare across the family, so I'm here to get a consensus. I, 26 female, have been with my fiance Chris, 26 male, for 4 years now. He and his sister, 21 female Lilac, are very close. They had a pretty traumatic childhood and always promised each other to be there no matter what. Lilac is a good sister to him, but as a person, truthfully, I can't stand her. She is literally the textbook definition of a bubbly blonde. She is overly charismatic, always giggling, and in general just acts too immature for my taste. She likes to pull pranks every once in a while on my fiance and he gets her back but the whole ordeal just seems childish and obnoxious to me okay you sound like an only child because that's what siblings do okay first of all she's 21 she's gonna be a little mature she's not that old two doesn't matter how old you are whenever i see my siblings that's what siblings do we just we just go back to being kids we're gonna act, we're gonna act immature just as how we are you're only seeing her in a setting when she's with her brother that's her older brother sibling relationships are different like oh my god like so she hasn't done anything to you you're just being a bitch you literally just said she hasn't done it's just her personality you don't like so she's not going to be in your wedding party like suck it up grow up talk about immaturity look at yourself mira ever since we got engaged i knew i didn't want her in my wedding party because that means i'd have to spend time with her at my bachelorette and other parties fast forward to last night and my fiance asked me when i plan on asking lilac to be a bridesmaid i got quiet and truthfully said i didn't plan on doing so this upset him because he said he wants his sister to be a part of the most important day of his life and that if i didn't do it he was going to make her a groomswoman to make sure she's included i can't lie this set me off I went off about how I want to feel respected by him and to be able to enjoy my wedding day. He said he also wants to enjoy his day, which to be fair, I understand. This is where I may be the asshole. I told him that I have always disliked his sister and wish he would just not include her for once on a day that isn't even about her. He got quiet and went into our guest room to be alone. A couple of minutes later, I got a text from Lilac that she completely respects my decision to not want her in the wedding party, but she's hurt to know what I actually feel about her. I didn't want her to find out at all, and now he's told his whole family about our argument. Half of them are attacking me and half of them are saying it's my day so I should be able to enjoy it. Honestly, this whole ordeal is stressful for no reason because Lilac isn't even upset I don't want her in my wedding party. Yet the whole family is upset and my fiance has been very short with me all day. So am I the asshole? You are literally hating on this little girl for nothing. She's 21. Oh my god. You can have a photo of their dead daddy. Am I the asshole for telling my husband to stop trying to parent my kids through their dead dad? He's probably like, your father wouldn't like this. Your father is disappointed in you. And that is traumatic. That is not okay. That is bad parenting. But let's see what's going on. I, 36 female, lost my late husband years ago. I'm now married to my husband of two years, Jason. He loves his stepkids, nine and six, and does a lot of things with them. However, he started doing something lately that I find weird and unacceptable. Whenever one or both kids do something wrong, instead of giving out proper punishments that we both agreed upon, he grab a photo of my late husband and start addressing it, complaining about the kids' behaviors while the kids stand and listen. You grab a photo of their dead daddy and tell them they're being bad kids? That is like next level fucked up. That is like traumatic. That is going to cause them psychological issues in the future. He then proceeds to tell them that their dad is mad at them and is disappointed they did this or that. I'm aware of the psychological impact this type of discipline can have on them. The kids would sometimes feel so guilty they'd start crying then ask if dad is really disappointed in them because their stepdad told them he told him that. So now he can talk to the dead too? I told him to knock it off several times and last night I blew up on him after I found out he told my daughter that her dad said he disowned her if she did X thing again. Her dad's dead! Why are you using- why are you weaponizing his death to his kids? That is so fucked up! I told him he was going too far and is causing huge damage to the kids and tainting their memory of their deceased father. He was like, this way they'll learn and if they really love their dad then they'll behave. I said, listen, the kids love and will always love their dad and what you're doing is causing damage to their love and remembrance for their dad. He said I was overreacting, but I argued that I already warned him. He said something about him being a parent too and that I have to respect his parenting and stop trying to act like the cool parent and to step up instead. He then went outside and stayed gone for hours. My sister said I'm being unfair to my husband and that he clearly cares about the kids. Otherwise, he wouldn't care about them correcting and never repeating their mistakes. So am I the asshole for my reaction? Okay, I'm sorry. If anyone agrees with this type of parenting style, you need help. This is not okay. If someone said that to me, if my dad was dead, I'm 26. If someone was like, Malola, this is your father and he's disappointed in you, I would cry. I would cry. I would feel like shit in that I'm an adult. These kids aren't even fully developed and you're giving them that type of trauma. 
I decided with my wife's agreement that because we now have a biological son, it is better to give the firstborn bio son the family name. Am I the asshole for changing my adopted son's name back to his original birth name after my bio son was born? Pregnancy and birth was kind of a miracle. So for background, my name is August Clementine V. My name goes back five generations now and has always been my plan to make my son August Clementine VI. Well, wife and I were horrified to find out I was essentially firing blanks and was told I would essentially never be able to father kids. Heartbreaking. We started the adoption process right away, looking in mostly foreign countries so it would go faster and we were able to adopt a baby boy from Vietnam. His first name was Tian, but my wife agreed to change his name to August Clementine VI. We also agreed we would let nature take its course because miracles can happen. We always called Tian by his birth name, so did family, school, church, etc. Even though his legal name was my name. Well, seven years later, a miracle did happen and my wife turned up unexpectedly pregnant. We have a healthy, beautiful, amazing biological son who we love just as obviously much as we love Tian. We do, like a biological son, like the fact that you keep referring to him as bio son, just a lot of red flags right there. Like when you adopt a kid, like you shouldn't bio or not, like that's your kid now. I decided with my wife's agreement that because we now have a biological son, it is better to give the firstborn bio son the family name. We have gone through the procedures to get Tian's name legally changed and our bio son has August Clementine the 6th on his birth certificate. Tian doesn't understand or care. To him, it was a fun day and he liked playing with the judge's gavel. We didn't really tell anyone, but we had to tell the school. Somehow, word got out from the busy body at the school and made it back to Tian's soccer team. And we are now essentially social pariahs at the subject of massive gossip. R word, W supremacists, accusations of not loving Tian enough. We've heard it all through closed mouth and hushed tones. It's gotten so bad we are considering moving Tian to a new team, but his three best friends stay on the team and he would be heartbroken. Am I the asshole here? Yeah, you for sure are. You can't use your child as a placeholder. And when you adopted him, you should have looked at him as your son regardless of biological or not. To carry on your family name bullshit. Oh my god.